Today we're going to learn how to paint, make your own body, and create some emotes. Here are some links if you want to skip ahead and check the video description for more help. Now stop! Clap your hands! Yeah, cause Bruce is going to take it to the men in advance! Alright, so today I'm going to be teaching you how to make your own custom body and custom animations. So I have this lovely little Old Ben Wilkers made by Nick Graves, and it even comes with a bunch of little animations when I hit down. I can, I can laugh, I can blow kisses, I can of course tip my fedora on all the ladies, smoke up, I can even bust into a dance. There's all sorts of things you can do, there's really no limit. So, the first thing we need to do though is learn how to properly create an item. Now I showed you guys this a little bit yesterday, but I'm going to go a little bit more into depth of the drawing tools. The first thing you need to do is uh, write in whatever you're going to name. So we're just going to put uh, test body. I'm going to be doing some tests. Um, and then the type here, what you're going to do is you're going to select a body. Now it's not a big deal if you don't select the body right away, but you really should always try to pick your type first before you start, before you start to build. Um, if you start building something in a solid and you go to a body, it'll still be there, but it might be a little off. Um, so if you draw, if you draw on a box like, sorry, if you draw on a box like uh, this for your body, and then you go to select body, you're like, oh, I had a lot more space to work with. Um, another another important thing to note is that if you hold control with the arrow keys, you can shift this around, which is really useful for um, when you're drawing in between different types of items and stuff. But uh, what you want to do is you're going to always want to select your type, and today we're going to learn about bodies, so you're going to select a body. So, the draw tools. Um, down here at the bottom are your colors, and how this works is if we you know, use the color black, we can change it at any time. This is really useful if you want to do recoloring. You don't necessarily need to worry about the color of your hair. You could just pick a bunch of colors now and then, you know what, you decide you want brown hair later, you can change it. Now, in many lands, sometimes the first or second, maybe even the third color, um, here, these three colors, can be used for things. What I mean is, in bodies, they all, there's, litter, there's special properties I'm going to go into later, and some of them are things like uh, dripping or sprinkling, and they let you emit particles off your body. Um, and these particles can have a color. So I would always recommend going from back to front when using the, the color wheel. Always make this your first color, then this your second, and this your third. And then if you find yourself that you need more colors than just this first row, you can actually use your mouse wheel, and you can see down here that we have multiple rows of colors that we can go through. So you'll have plenty of options. You may want to may want to just maybe scroll down to the second wheel and never use any of this first row. Um, just to stay safe. So what we're going to do is we're first going to grab some colors for uh, my guy. So let me grab uh, a couple browns. Another thing you could do is if you're using maybe a template or another body, you can hold down control key and you'll get the little alt dropper key. So see this? Maybe I want this the skin color type 2. There we go. I can grab that. You know what? I like this wood. I'm going to grab that wood color, and then I'll grab this stone. So that's a good way if there's a, if you already have a lot of things around you, if you want to kind of build the template of colors. So that's a good way if you already kind of have a template from maybe a previous body or your previous design, or you're using somebody else's, if you want to kind of quickly get your colors in. If you want the exact color, what we do is we go to the top left, and we can click RGB, and then we can put in a color code for our exact color that we're selecting. Now, once we have all our colors, it's time to draw. The first thing to note is if you want to have a symmetry in whatever you're drawing, you can press the S key or go up to the top, click the little arrow and click symmetry on or off. What this does is you'll see a line come down the middle and anything you draw here on the left side or on the right side will get flipped. So if I wanted to draw, you know, a kind of a circle type character, I could just do that. When drawing, if you ever make a mistake, let's say let's say you make a little circle here, and then you accidentally, oh, I put a, oh, 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 oh. Um, a quick way to undo is just to hit Control Z like you would in most image editing programs. You can also copy and paste things. So let's say this is my head, and I want to copy it onto other frames or something. I can hit Control C, Control V, and paste it into these other frames. Other important drawing tools are the fill tool. If you were to draw a circle and then you wanted to fill it. All you would do is you'd hold the alt key and you'll get the little bucket tool and that will help you fill by holding shift You can make perfect lines So if I want to click here and then I want to draw you know a perfect line all the way over here I just have to hold shift and then click 
It's a great way for building triangles. Other important tools are the flip, rotate, and mirror. F for flip, R for rotate, and for mirror. Mirror will let you mirror the image back and forth. Flip will, will do the opposite, so we'll do from top to bottom. And then rotate will actually turn the image 90 degrees. When drawing something, if you want to delete, all you need to do is right click. If you want to easily go back and forth between colors, all you need to do is hold the control. It'll make the little eyedropper tool and you can select a different color to start drawing with and we can select back and forth. If you would like to delete really easily, all you can have to do is click right click. If you also want to delete things really fast, you can select the little R down here and then hold Alt and then use the paint bucket to delete colors out. And if you want to just completely delete the image, you can just hit delete on the keyboard. It takes a little while to get used to all the painting tools, so don't get too frustrated at the couple first things you're drawing. You're kind of getting confused with, why am I selecting this color? Oh, ooh, ooh. So now that we're going over drawing, it's time to look at making a body. So. At the top here, we have a bunch of different little buttons that have little pictures, and what these pictures represent are the different states in which your body can be. So this very first one is just your idle stance. This is just when you're standing. The next one is for your walk cycle. So what it will do is it'll go between one, two, one, two, one, two. These next two are used for when you are jumping and falling. This first one here is when you're on your up motion of a jump. And the second one is when you either release the jump button or when you start to fall. This next one is used for your ladder and it will just flip back and forth to do your climbing animation. This next one is your building animation and that's the animation when you are in the creator right here. This next button is for when you're sitting down in a chair. Now these last two frames are used for shutting your eyes and your mouth. And what these are used for is blinking, sleeping, talking. And so you only really want to draw over the parts that are changing. So you can see in the eye one, all that is done is just some skin colors put in there. And then for the mouth one, it actually is closing the mouth. Now one helpful tip when you're actually working with all these cells is you may actually want to copy your body so you don't have to draw all the pixels multiple times. Now you can do this by simply pressing Control C and then Control V into the different cells. And that lets you do something like if all we're doing is a walk cycle, then we just change Bruce's feet. And we do a little quick thing like this and this. Maybe we'll put another foot forward like that. And then boom, and now Bruce has got a feet, and now his walk cycle would look something like this. Not, not better than what I currently have, but I guess it could count as walking. Now the only good way to test your body is to actually just hit complete. Don't worry, we'll still be able to edit it, but what you'll want to do is once you've changed, you've done your changes to your body, you'll just go to the, the new little icon, you'll click it, and then you'll change into your body. I probably still have some more work to do on mine. When you're working on a body, it's also pretty common to have many, many, many copies of the previous designs. So don't be afraid just to start deleting them to not fill up your entire inventory. And remember, you can do that by just holding control and then click, 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 click. And if you accidentally ever delete one, remember if you search in bin, you can get back to those old bodies that you just deleted. Now after you've drawn all the different states your body can be in, there's one more thing you can do to your body for special effects. At the beginning, if you remember, I said don't set this color. Now you see Bruce Willikers set this color. At some point I'm going to have to change it if I ever want these effects. Now down here at the bottom, there's a little three dot button that you can click that will show you some extra options. Um, all of these options change the effect of your body by making it uh, either have a small particle effect or change the way it looks. The last one is clonable. What clonable means is it means that somebody can take your body and then edit it. If you don't set clonable, somebody will only be able to ever collect their body. They won't be able to edit it. Now everything that I typically make that you guys can see uh, should almost always be clonable so you'll be able to edit it. But for example, if you put a lot of work into something and you don't really want somebody just claiming it as their own you might not want to always check this box now for all these other effects I've kind of set up a little demonstration of what they would do uh, in comparison to my current body so if you select hot you'll have these little dark smoke clouds coming out if you select steam you'll have some steam come off you bubbles will have the little tiny bubbles come off you shiny will have little bits of glimmer every now and then bristling will actually shoot off a particle and the color of that particle again is determined by the first color in that slot as is dripping that'll drop particles sprinkling that'll sprinkle particles constantly out of you and finally bright you can't actually see until you put on the body and then it becomes really apparent what it does but this can be a really powerful effect if you want to make something kind of ethereal or magic-y 
Alright, now once you have your avatar in a state you're pretty happy with, it's time to make some emotions with them. So, what you're going to want to do is you're going to go back to the Create button, and you're going to want to go to Body, but this time we're going to hit the Change button at the bottom. Now when you do this, the stand state of your body is going to be loaded into this first cell. And so we have three things at the top here. Um, we have two different states that our body can be in, and then we also have a third button, which is for a particle effect. Now to make good motions, you're really going to have to play around with this, because there's a lot you can do. You don't necessarily need to use these two frames for your body. In fact, you can actually have it replace your body, um, and so we could just have almost nothing here, and then we could just have a ghost animation. We could just we could be invisible. We could train. We could lower the transparency of all our colors and be a very ghostly willikers. Woo! But if we don't select replace body, though, then this goes on top of our body. So if we wanted to not even use this as a body, but as just some sort of project off our body we could. Now when we select the extra options for this part we're just given all sorts of options and really you're gonna just have to go through them all to really see what you can do but I'll kind of explain some of the simple ones for you. Everyone without this icon is actually affecting the two body frames and the ones with this icon are only affecting the little emitter um, animation that you add in this one. So replace body will make it so your body is gone for the duration of the animation. Setting this to quick or long will be how much the animation plays. If you set it to spoken, then what's actually going to happen is whatever you name it, the name of the motion, is going to be said. So if I said, hello world, then when I go to test my motion, it'll just say hello world over my head. Now, bursts, flows, bristles, and random position are the different ways that the particle that the particles that come out of your body uh, can be animated. Bursts will kind of explode out of you. Flows will kind of just rain out of you. Bristles will kind of just pop out of you. And random position would be random. Fade in will obviously just have it come to fade in. Slow and fast just affect the speed of the particle. For a diagonal, backwards and downward affect direction. If you're wondering where up is, um, particles have gravity, so what you actually want to do is just make it lightweight if you would rather it go up. Setting it to rotate will have it so it will spin over and over again. Setting it to bright will kind of have that same effect that you saw earlier on my body on the particle. Brief, very brief, all at once, delayed start, all of these just affect kind of the duration of the particle effect, much like Quick and Long did for the animations on the body. Singular will make it so it only shoots a single particle, and more will actually add more particles than normal. Non-flipping is especially useful for if you're making something with text, like if you're actually going to draw a particle that says LOL, you probably wouldn't want it to flip, or else it would look kind of weird. Now actually going over the motions kind of really doesn't show off their effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show some of mine, which might be kind of popular ones you kind of would want to copy. The easiest one is dance. Um, dance, all it is is there's, there's no particle at all. But if you really wanted to, you could add something like, you know, a musical note. Do, 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 do. Just add a little musical note like that. Color it in. And then what we could do is we could go down here and bright's pretty good. Zigzag's pretty good. Let's make it lightweight so it goes up over our head. And that'll add a little note. Um, but the rest of the dance emote is just um, two different frames of Old Man Wilkers kind of, you know, grabbing his willy and then <laughs> stretching his arm out. But uh, for the actual options for Old Man Wilkers dance, uh, we set obviously set replace body. If we don't do that, you're going to create this weird layering effect where there are two versions of your body. And then I set it to long because I wanted to make it so when I start dancing, I'm just dancing for as long as I can in a single animation. But with that dance now, when I click it and test it, you can see that little note I add now comes out of me when I do it. So you can decide if you want to add a little particle note to your dances, or if you would rather just kind of just have the dance mode. Another common one is kissing. So for a kiss, what I do is I make a little kissy face in uh, my body animation here, and then I draw a little heart that goes just over top of my mouth. And then what we do is we set replace bodies. Um, I set it to quick because I just kind of want my lips to go out just once, just to do the little kiss. I don't want them to go back and forth and keep making the face as my kiss flies across. For the actual kiss, I set it to fade in. I set it to forward. I set it to singular and then zigzag and then also make it lightweight. And the end result for a kiss animation is this.
this final one of Old Man Willikers lighting up cigar, again, it's going to start at this point, start to kind of feel pretty obvious which effects I'm using. But if we load it up, you can see there's Old Man Willikers with a cigar. He's kind of just mouth just kind of moves it up and down. And then over here is just a smoke cloud. It's kind of hard to see because I've made it really, really transparent. And how I did that is I drew the colors and then changed the transparencies. Um, but down here, uh, I select replace body. I select long, so he's just doing the, the base animation of smoking the cigar um, as long as possible. And then I select random position, fade in. I have the cloud be very slow, forward, and then diagonal. And then to make it go up, again, you just click uh, lightweight. Um, I also added the little rotate there. Um, and then the only thing that's kind of cool is I added the delay start. And I don't know if you noticed, but when I start smoking, the particles don't come out right away. They actually take a second to start slowly coming out and then more and more and more and more. Now, finally, the one thing I didn't cover was adding sounds. In order to add sounds in many lands, you need to actually have collected the sounds. The easiest way to get that is to get it in the item repo, but if you're watching this video, maybe in the first week it is out, or if, if I have a, a good place for these type of resources um, later in the future, you can find this little book that is a sound book. And now if we go up to here and you click space on a sound book that you found, or if it's just in your inventory and you just click it, right click it, um, you will load every sound in the game. Um, Manyland is hoping in the future that we they can actually have custom sounds, but because they can't right now, they just have lots and lots of sounds for you to use. You can test them by just right-clicking. Shall we play a game? And all these sounds can be actually attached to your character. So all you have to do is collect these sounds from the book. So we'll just collect this one. Mm. Yeah, that's a good one. I'm going to make an emote with that. Add that in there. And the next time you're in a motion, now all you need to do is go to the top, Click Add Sound, and then click it from your collection. And now, anytime you do that emote, you will do the sound effect. So, here we go. Mm. There we go. Mm, mm. He's right, old man Willikers. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, so that's going to do it for today. Um, I'm actually working on a cool body shop. I have this little template here. I'm, it's going to be in the main world in Bruce Willikers um, up until we finish the body shop. So if you want to copy it and kind of make a skin that's kind of similar to mine, please, by all means, it's completely clonable. In the future, though, I am going to try to have a body shop where you can not only copy this, but you can copy a bunch of emotes for it. You can copy a bunch of hairstyles to, that are really easy to use. Uh, it's something we're kind of working on. You kind of saw me in the area that it was getting built. But when it's done, I'll get to be able to show it to you. Now, in my next episode, though, I'm going to be talking about interactives and dynamics. And those are things that you can use in your private world to do really, really cool things. And we're going to show you how to make these portals that will let you get to either sub-worlds or your main world or let other people into your world naturally. And we're going to learn how to make these cool, fancy password walls that, if you know a secret code, will let you inside. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.